Oh, hi everyone. If you're joining me live, I just thought I'd hop on today and share a couple of uh, techniques, different cards. I was inspired after photographing the fabulous sunset the other evening. I was inspired by the silhouettes, so I thought I'd come and make a couple of cards with silhouettes. And so I've got two silhou uh, silhouettes, two different ways to share with you today. Um, yeah, so that's it. I'm going to get cracking. I'm going to just turn my camera around in a second. I've got a few bits out. I'm not entirely prepared. I've got just a few bits, but I'm in my craft room, so everything's to hand, so I can just do some makes straight away. And um, if you're wondering if there's some noises behind me, and you're wondering why my craft room door is open, <laughs> because I have... A little house guest called Ellie Dog and she's sleeping on her bed. I don't even know whether you can see it properly. Let me have a look. See if I can. Yeah. And she's a Labrador. She takes up quite a bit of room and I can't close my door because her bed's in the way. So I'm just looking after Ellie for the day <coughs> for my next door neighbour. So let's spin you round. Bear with me as the camera's just a bit wibbly wobbly as always. Here we go. I'll just get you straight down onto my desk space. Ooh. And as always, um, if you're joining me on social media, here's where you can find me across social media on um, Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, and I've just added a YouTube channel, but you, it's not Izzy's Crafty Bees. Until I get 100 subscribers, I'm not able to have a customised link, but um, I've posted my link on my Facebook page, I think. I've only been playing with it this morning, so it's a new thing. As always, if you're shopping with me online and your order is over £25, then please use the host code and I will be able to send you a free gift next month. Okay, I think Mum's just joined me. Hi Mum. Hello Mum. You saw these cards yesterday, but that's fine. You can still join me. I just wanted to share with you my happy post that came yesterday. I posted photos, but sometimes it's nice to see them in daylight as well. So this, first of all, beautiful little card from Linda. Both came from my team members. And what I absolutely adore about this, apart from now I feel I need the Hydrangea Hill Suite, but what I love about this is the way that the outline stamp um, is really crisp, but then the colour stamp is quite free. It's I described it, I think, as organic. It's quite free. A bit like a loose print or a loose watercolour. I just really love that. I think it's so effective. It's gorgeous. So that was the card that Linda sent. And she also sent me this freestanding desk calendar, which I think is just beautiful. She's used a piece of the DSP for the top. But what I don't think the photograph actually showed you in enough detail was that the dies that come with the set cut out individually all these tiny little flowers as we know hydrangeas are made the hydrangea flower heads made up of individual flowers and Linda stuck them all on individually and I think that's so effective and absolutely beautiful so I was thrilled to, uh, thrilled to bits to receive that yesterday thank you Linda and the other card I received was well I actually received two cards but I wanted to show this one because it's it's using products from the new catalogue and that's this one from Nicola and she stamped the background it's very subtle but it's there nevertheless in both corners let me see if I can get them both in with tone on tone and then use the stamp uh, stitched with whimsy border die and she's used that on both the DSP I think the camera's just picking that up there as well as the white background and I absolutely love that sort of monochrome or monotone colour effect so just blue and white it's really classy it's gorgeous so thank you Nicola and the cards I want to share with you this afternoon let me just move that out of the way are uh, 
these two, so silhouettes two ways. So I've got silhouettes stamped on a coloured background and silhouettes using cut out dies on a coloured background. And I did both of these two using watercolour cardstock, which actually in daylight you can tell just the difference between the whisper white thick cardstock and the watercolour layer. And I actually watercoloured this layer and then I decided just to compare a watercoloured background, which is this one on the right, with this one, which is a blended background. And I'm actually going to show you this technique using the new blending brushes on um, a background. And I didn't use watercolour cardstock for this one. I used the shimmer white cardstock. And for the card I'm going to make, on air, I'm going to actually make one of those tall skinny cards that fits in a DL envelope. So normally when we use these envelopes it's for business purposes and we fold a piece of A4 three times. But to make a card, a nice tall card, it's quite fashionable, I'm going to show you the dimensions of the card. So we'll be just using one piece of white, um, thick, basic white um, thick cardstock and I'm going to use a strip of colour just to give it a pop. So without further ado, oh hi Sylvia's joined in now, hello. So without further ado, I'm just going to get some um, white cardstock from my cupboard, bear with me. So I've got my whisper white thick. Let's have a look. So whisper white thick cardstock and I'm just going to use one piece of A4. I'm going to show you how I cut that to size for that fashionable tall um, sized card. Makes a nice card, a bit special. Um, this one's going to go in the post to a friend whose birthday it is this month. So I'm going to open up my trimmer using the measuring um, arm on my trimmer. And oh hi Debbie. And I'm going to cut my piece of A4 down to 21 in length, 21 centimetres. Now let me treat you to a bit of inchery. So that's eight and a quarter inches, I think. Not very good on the inches. But I'm cutting the length of the A4 down to 21 centimetres. And I'm going to keep this piece for the top layer. And now I'm going to score it, just move it along at ten and a half. So that gives us that nice tall. Oh, guten Tag, Maxi. <laughs> Wie geht's? Um, I am going to pop my, oh no, I'm not going to pop my trimmer away. I'm going to take this piece that I've just cut off and I'm going to trim it down by one centimetre off the length so I can then use that as my top layer to decorate so that just trims that down so from one piece of A4 I've now got my base card and my top layer and you can see I've trimmed a piece of um, I'm going to use my original card I used the pink I used was um, melon mambo but I'm going to use magenta madness it's such a nice bright color and I'm just in the mood for some bright colors hi Helen so I trimmed this piece to um, 20 centimetres and I trimmed it, the width of it, just a couple of centimetres because all I'm going to do is pop it under one edge. That's all. I'm not going to do a full layer for this card. So let's have a look at that technique that I used for blending. And I need to say how impressed I am with these blend new blending brushes from Stampin' Up. Really, really impressed just going to get the other one out so in the pack you get three and previously before these are brand new a brand new product for stamping up I'm going to take a seat now because I've been standing these are a brand new product in the um, January to June mini catalogue I should get you the product code and the price probably let's have a look so quick um, reference if you remember, if we go to the back of the catalogue, and I can now open the catalogue because it's live, to page 86, 
the, at the back of the catalogue we've got those new indexes of products so the blending brushes come in a pack of three and they're 11 pounds and 25 pence and up until stamping up brought them out i've been using some that i bought online some makeup brushes and i thought well how different are the stamping up brushes going to be and so i had an air of skepticism thinking they won't be very much different to the makeup brushes that i bought and oh boy they actually are quite different the fibers are so much finer and i got quite a lovely smooth let me bring in that card that i did last night and just show you quite a beautiful smooth transition and blend and ink application with them so i'm going to hopefully i'm going to demonstrate that to you just now so i'm going to take that layer that i want to decorate and as you can see on my original card i had this nice um what's the word random or sort of it's not jagged it's just a random feathered edge and i achieved that just using some decorators masking tape so really inexpensive you can use your pretty washi tape if you've got pretty washi tape um, but if you want to save that for your other projects then some nice decorators masking tape in a wide version so i've just pulled off a piece that's just slightly longer than my card layer and i'm going to carefully take my time and tear it i'm not going to pull it really fast because it can tend to go into all kinds of different directions and now I want a feathered edge but I don't want too much of a wiggly edge or jagged or crazy edge so I'm just going to take my time this one's quite tacky so I'm just going to show you another tip once I've done this so take your time tearing down that piece of masking tape let's pop one down on the desk They're quite long pieces as you can see this is quite a tacky masking tape it it does say low tack on it but it's quite sticky and i want to reduce that stickiness because i just want to use it as a mask so i'm going to actually stick it on to if i was wearing my jogging pants or something i'm just going to use my sleeve of my fleece a few times and that will pick up some fluff and that will just reduce the tack so i'm going to lay one side onto my card layer because i've made it slightly longer it helps just to keep not only to get that masked I have too many hairs on there from my fleece to, to get that lovely wavy line but it also sticks down to my work surface and stops it from sliding around whilst I'm um, doing the blending technique with the brushes so just do this two or three times and it will just reduce the tack because what you don't want to happen is when you peel it off you don't want it to lift any of the cardstock up now I'm just looking to see that I've got a sort of an equal um, piece covered so I don't want like an inch at this side and not very much at that side you get my drift so I've used one brush in the yellow shade ink and one brush in the pink shade and I've got the clean one and I'm also going to use a microfiber cleaning cloth which is useful for cleaning the brushes in between. Now the colours I'm going to use, I'm going to go for, not that one, <laughs> I'm going to go for Bumblebee, because of course Bumblebee is my favourite yellow, for obvious reasons, and I'm going to go for Magenta Madness. I'm just going to double check that everything's still in shot. How much screen do I have? If I just pop my ink pad there, you can see you can see it's still in shot maybe i'll just pop it there and that's one brush per ink pad so i'm going to rest that brush on the ink pad to make sure that when i'm going back into this ink pad i'm not tempted to go into that ink pad if that makes sense so here we go the blending technique is um 
pretty straightforward now it's going to if you're precious about your workspace I suggest that you use a grid sheet or scratch paper underneath um, this is a um, a piece of my work surface that I've glued down to a laminated mat just for working on and I try and keep one of these clean for video purposes and change it every so often you can already see that my work surface needs changing so I'm not too precious about my work surface today for this technique but it is a messy technique so just use some scrap paper underneath if you're at all worried about what's underneath so I'm just going to tap 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 quite lightly to pick up some ink and I'm going to start off the piece just in a light swirling motion and I'm just going to swirl onto my piece of white cardstock. And they already feel so smooth. Ooh, let's just stick that piece of masking tape down. And we just build this background up always try and start off your piece because that first contact can leave a spot where you come into contact so you're getting the ink blending smoothly I can see I've got a slight spot just at the top there so I'm going to come back in and blend down and what you can do is you can build up an ombre you can blend the colour so it's smooth and even and you've got an even amount of ink blended onto your cardstock or you can build up that kind of darker at the top or darker into the corners and I'm just going to work my way down oh it makes my voice go funny while I'm, <laughs> while I'm wiggling so I'm holding the brush quite lightly and you'll see they've got quite flexible necks they're quite quite nice and flexible so they take it's kind of like a bit of a a shock absorbing effect when you press down and I'm just putting some light pressure on I'm not scrubbing away like I'm scrubbing the floor I'm probably going to bring this two-thirds of the way down and come back up with pink and I'm getting a slightly darker yellow to this side because that's where I'm starting so I'm going to now come over this side and it's just a lovely technique I think you need to have a go get some brushes have a go and have a play and work out what finished technique you like the best or what finished effect you like the best not technique you can see I've got just slightly paler in the middle and dark around the edges, which is fine. And you can blend two colours together. I've got the squeaky chair now. <laughs> That's the fun of going live, isn't it? It's fantastic. So at the moment, I'm quite happy with that yellow layer of colour. I'm going to switch to my pink. Remember, Magenta Madness is a really nice bright pink, a bit brighter than um, Melon Mambo. So I'm going to start at the bottom and I'm going to work across. I'm going to work my way up to meet the yellow. I can tell you immediately, these brushes are so much smoother than the other ones. The other ones were great, don't get me wrong. I've really loved them. I've enjoyed using them tremendously. It's kind of given me lots of practice at this blending technique. And I was really sceptical. I thought they can't possibly be much different, the stamping up ones. And I am that kind of demonstrator that will be absolutely honest about the products because I want anyone who buys stamping up products from me to be happy be able to use them get good results um and you know really carry on using them i don't want to promote something for the sake of making a sale and then have customers who are unhappy with the results or not get on with how to use the actual product 
particularly with tools. So if you're struggling with tools, I'm always here to help you to get the best results possible. So you can see I've just blended that. It's not taking any time at all. I'm going to come back down and just do a bit, bit more down here, make it darker. It's just such fun. It's so therapeutic. It's wonderful. You get lost in my own little world of pink and yellow. It's marvellous. I'm just going to blend them together across that middle piece. Now, with the um, microfiber cleaning cloth, this is one of the spongy ones. You can get various ones. All I'm going to do is give it a scrub across the cloth and that will stop any excess ink coming off and I can keep this one for shades of pinks and reds and remember our ink stamping a pink is water-based so ultimately if I do want to wash these brushes I should be able to rinse them in water um, I'm not sure how long they'll take to dry but by using a microfiber cloth that actually just stops any more ink coming off. So if I get a piece of just whisper white scrap, there's no ink coming off that brush now. It's clean. That's the excess ink transferred to the microfiber cloth. So that's all you need really um, when you're finished is to give them a, a scooch across that microfiber cloth. Now I've finished with those two ink colours, I'm going to pop them just to one side and I'm going to, hopefully I'm going to reveal this and hopefully it hasn't stuck. I can see a little bit of sticking. sweater fluff has stopped it from sticking too much. I can see a little bit of lift but it's not um, it's not damaged it so much that it won't make a card. So now I've got my lovely background and I hope that's a nicer quite a nice technique for you to have learned. So that's my background. I'm going to prepare some silhouettes. So I've got the choice of I can stamp a silhouette using the Dragonfly Garden wildflowers or maybe a silhouette using the garden wishes these are all in the dragonfly garden suite in the catalog i could maybe stamp some dandelions alternatively i can put some of these die cut pieces on which i absolutely love and i know that they're nice and tall and this is a tall card so i think i'm going to go with that technique um so i'm going to get out the dies I'm going to, I am going to make this fairly quick. I'm going to get the Dandy Wishes dies from the set. And I just love this. I think you saw me use it last week. I absolutely love it. So I know I'm going to use three of these on the card um, because it's a nice tall card. So I'm going to probably layer them up one, two three maybe in a row like that but I'm certainly going to cut three of those so the other images in the or the other dies that are quite nice and tall are this one it's more of a sort of sunburst full flower and that layers up with these pieces so you can actually layer it up with these and that makes a nice um, flower like an individual flower on your card but because I want to go for more of a silhouette approach I'm going to use this dandelion seed head or dandelion, maybe it's more like, um, oh, what's it more like, the meadow sweet, I think, that's the word I'm looking for. So I'm just going to get some um, card, that's the word I'm looking for, <laughs> I think I'm cracking up today. I want some whisper white card because I'm going to use white on white. It's nice, it's a nice clean look. Thank goodness you're all still with me as I'm tripping over my words and fumbling about here. 
I actually have to say that I um, haven't prepared very much. I just made these cards yesterday and thought that'd be nice to jump on Facebook Live. So all I'm doing is just measuring how wide a piece I need to be able to die cut these and just cutting a piece off. I know I haven't got any large pieces in my scrap drawer at the moment. So I've spent this morning looking at some social, um, updating my social media. I've wanted to have a YouTube channel for a long time, but I'm not a video editing fan. I would rather be messing in my craft room with my ink, paper and ink, than um, editing videos. I just, honestly, I've done it in the past and it takes so much time to edit your videos and get them all looking super sparkling and all the timing and everything and putting music and subtitles and captions and blah 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 yawn i'd rather be crafting for real or watching a good drama on tv or reading a good book so video editing is not my hobby so what i've realized is i can actually upload my facebook live videos to a youtube channel which is what I've been doing, learning this morning how to do. So I managed to get two of my Facebook Live videos onto a YouTube channel. And then I've discovered that you need 100 subscribers. I think that's right. 100 subscribers, or 100 must be subscribers, not followers, um, before you are eligible, basically before YouTube determine that you're sticking around long enough um, for you to actually have a custom name or domain name for your YouTube channel. So my YouTube channel at the moment has a domain name that's not Izzy's Crafty Bees or Izzy Shashinsky even. So um, I'm not going to use that. I'm going to cut another piece because I want three long um, stems um, now I've got everything on my desk. Just bear with me, you know what I'm like for faffing. I want three long stemmed. When I did the card yesterday, I used this piece for my third um, seed head because it was a shorter card. But because this is a long, tall, skinny card... Um, so I know I'm not, you know, I'm not selling for any other uh, craft supplier. Um, however, you'll want to know where I got the envelopes from, I'm sure. And what I will say is, let me just bring one in. This is the envelope I'm going to use. And as white is a really difficult colour to actually match... Um, I will give them a plug. These are from the Paper Mill, or Paper Mill Direct, I think it's called. And um, they're a really fantastic shade of white that matches perfectly our, what was Whisper White is now basic white cardstock. Because sometimes white can be blue, a bluey white or a um, an icy white, a cold white, and sometimes white can be a warm white. So sometimes it is difficult to match. So lovely, absolutely love this die. Um, so I've got three of those cut out. Happy, happy. And I'm going to just look at the layout now because although they are tall, they're not going to reach the very top. So I'm going to see if I can overlap the stems. I would like one quite near the top, maybe one in the middle and one a bit further down and I want them to slightly overlap the um, coloured space in the middle so I'm thinking already that I'm going to put my sentiment maybe my sentiment here just underneath where I can get them to, to cross those stems to cross so I always lay out my cards before I stick anything down I always if, if I'm using die cuts We'll do the layout roughly before I stick anything down. So I've got my card blank. Let's just lay that back down. 
So I'm going quite plain and white. And let's see if I need that strip of magenta madness just to lift it because that piece, I can move that across. So I'm going to put the vote to you. If I just position that like this, yes or no for the strip of magenta madness, shall I go with or without? Bear in mind we'll have a sentiment somewhere across here. So I'll give you a couple of minutes to answer because I know there's always a delay. And I'll just prepare my bits for sticking. With or without, have we got any comments coming with the pink strip or without? With the pink strip, Lorna is first to say, hi Lorna, thank you. As Lorna is first to say, I'm going to put it, oh, Deb likes both, controversial, can't make your mind up. I think we'll go with then as Lorna is first to say, first come, first served. So we'll stick that in. Okie doke, let me just pop those bits to one side. So I'm going to make my layers first and I'm going to just look at the positioning then of that pink strip. So I think because I'm, I'm right handed, I automatically kind of want to put something to the right hand side. Now I'm wondering whether I should have two strips, one at each side. I guess I could do that. Because I could just cut this one straight down the middle and stick it under. Shall we do one down each side? <gasps> She's getting the trimmer out. She's getting the trimmer out. So it's a skinny strip. So I'm being frugal. I'm not using more cardstock than is necessary. Let's be frugal. See, I could have done a whole mat to go underneath. And then used up quite a bit of cardstock. So I'm going to flip that over and I'm going to use um, my stamp and seal just down each side. Or oh, should I use? No, I'm not. I'm actually going to use Tombow because then I've got a bit of wiggle room. It is a very narrow strip that I've cut. So I've got some wiggle room. I'm just going to run a very thin bead down each side. And I'll stick, mm, you see, just put it straight in the glue. <clears throat> so I'll stick that down that side. Don't worry, I've got glue on it, but I'm going to just really relieve it with my glue rubber. And it's slightly longer, so that's fine. It's good to be longer and not short, too short. I can always snip that. See, by doing it with Tombow, what I've been able to do is lay it on the back and then adjust it when I flip it over. I can just adjust it. So I've got equal down each side. and straighten it up. Now, messy girl, where's my glue rubber? Let's get some of that glue. Just get rid of some of that glue. I'll never understand why Stampin' Up stopped selling the glue rubber. You can get them online. Gosh, there's quite a bit of <laughs> extra glue on there. And my glue rubber is so well used. Every so often you have to, um, there's no other word for it, unbogify it. So what's everyone else doing today? Yeah, Lorna, how come you're watching? Are you working from home? Are you sneaky watching on your phone with your headphones on? What's everyone up to today? Oh, gosh, quite a bit of spare glue on there. Right, that's done that. Super. OK, I'm going to stick this whole layer. Well, I don't know how long I was paused then. 
but Google interrupted me. So I do apologise if I dropped off air for a moment. I'm not quite sure how long I was gone for. Oh, I didn't trim those little extra bits. Let me just get my snips. I was working away and all of a sudden Google said, here are the search results. What on earth is that all about? And I've just realised that I've forgotten to turn off notifications. So, if I get a text or a message, it'll ping. But hey, I'm amongst friends. Okay. Oh, so Helen says that you're, she's making a few thank you cards. That's lovely. So I can't have been off air that long. I don't know why I dropped off. That's just really bizarre. Okay, I'm going to give you a little tip about sticking on um, really intricate die cut pieces like this. Now, we do sell the uh, self-adhesive um, sheet or the sticky sheet that you can use to die cut to make it double-sided. But... I find that with an intricate piece like this, there's quite a lot of waste with that sheet. So what I like to do is I like to take, you can use your stamping up silicone mat, um, or I use these little sheets. This is a piece of, um, I think it's uh, Teflon coated non-stick oven lining fabric so you can put it in the bottom of your oven for easy cleaning and I cut it up into small squares and I use it in classes when I'm running a class and it's ever so useful you can use it just like you use a silicone sheet and I keep one piece of sponge specifically for, for gluing in a little plastic tub and I'm going to actually just grab a couple of these sheets because I think I'll need a couple of them or a bigger surface area. In fact, that's a really good size one. Let's use that one for the actual gluing. And this one, I'm going to make a puddle of liquid glue. And I'm going to get my sponge, pick up some of that liquid glue with my sponge and holding the die cut piece I'm going to put it to one side and I'll tell you why in a second and holding it st steady now I could use my take your pick tool for this because then I won't get glue on my fingers so I could use my take your pick tool and in fact I think I'll use yeah I'll use the spatula end and see how that goes and I'm going to now just dab the back of the die cut piece all over with the glue It just saves trying to I can open that with one hand. It saves trying to put minuscule tiny dots everywhere and just getting the squeeze of the glue tube um, just right. So I know I can pick that up now. And I can stick that to my card. So I can just move the gluey mat out of the way. And I'm going to go for the top one. And I'm going to stick that reasonably high up. And let that stem down. There we go. And that's just got the glue in exactly the right place. That's some spare glue. Now I'm going to bring that, that mat back in and you can see where I've had the other one. So I'm going to lay the next one face down, but not in the puddle of wet glue that I've already had. So I'm going to position that on the mat, but not in the puddle of glue. Use my take your pick tool, pick up some more glue on my sponge from the other mat and holding that down, dab the back of this one all over Oops. and let's pop this 
this one down. Where should we have that? Let's have that. Let's have them just touching slightly. That sticks beautifully. Without too much glue, there's nothing squidging out anywhere. There's just enough to stick it down. And now, do I feel that this mat's clean enough or am I too sticky? Well, if I feel it's too sticky, what I can do, oh, I'm looking the place, what I can do is just wipe some of the excess off. Because it's on one of those non-stick mats, it just rubs off, rubs straight off. So let's have another little puddle of, of glue and lay our last one down using our sponge. We can, oh. I bet you wish you'd seen this technique when you were sticking all your snowflakes down at Christmas time. I may have shown you this before, I'm sure I have. And let's pop this one. Shall we go that way? Three in a row. Shall we have them overlap it? No, we'll go three in a row like this. Make such a nice silhouette. I'm not pressing that down because I'm going to snip that bottom stem the same length as that one. I might even extend that one there and by popping my sentiment maybe just across where I've joined it I think that that will help them all just connect. They all just look great. Now I'm going to pop both of those mats to one side. Once all that glue is completely dried, I'll be able to just rub it with my finger and it'll all just rub off. They're really, it's really super stuff, that um, non-stick oven lining mat. Sometimes you see it for sale in, um, if you shop in Aldi, they have it in the specials in the middle. Now I know that stamping up again, we do sell a silicone glue mat or a silicone stick sticking mat. I think it's £5.50 and just in my mind, again I'm not doing myself out of a sale, but I'd rather you saved your £5.50 and put that towards that stamp set that's on your wish list or um, maybe a pack of envelopes that you know match your card stock or even put it towards that ink pad that you haven't got in your collection because it's a glue mat at the end of the day it's also it's heat proof so you can use it with your hot glue gun so technique for the background nice blending such a smooth blend it's so um easy to use those brushes absolutely fantastic to use those brushes and i've just realized i've stuck that on the other way up to the um first card i had yellow at the top and pink at the bottom i think those flower heads stand out really nice against the pink and i'm going to stamp a sentiment and i've got um happy birthday which is from the happy thoughts set which i'm loving at the moment i'm really i've used this quite a bit recently um, and I like it because I like the mixture of capitals and um, italics in the font and I also like the size it's such a nice size so I feel happy birthday would be a good size for this card because it's a tall card so I'm going to get myself some scrap white I save all of these pieces that I trim off the white. Oh, bless you. Brenda's catching up on chores and Lorna's leaving me because she... Oh, oh, you must have been in your lunch break, Lorna. That's great. So you can watch, watch me later on catch up. So I'm going to stamp the happy birthday in a dark colour 
so it stands out nice against the silhouette and against that background and I think I'm going to choose for a change I think I might go for Night of Navy and think about navy blue ink so I've you know if I was handwriting you don't always have to stamp everything in black sometimes you can go for a change so remember our stamping technique tap 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 nice and light we don't have to give it CPR and then straight down a little bit of even pressure Give it a moment to sink into the cardstock and straight up. Nice crisp image. That was not me, that grunting noise. That was the dog. <laughs> She's snoring away behind me. It's so lovely having a dog in the house again. <laughs> it's wonderful. Now, is there a punch that would look nice with that sentiment? Shall we just go for a punch? Um, let's have a look. Is this one going to be wide enough? Or shall we go for a die? That's wide enough, but it's not deep enough because I've used a skinny piece of scrap. So, just wondering whether I could trim that across the top. I'm going to give it a try. Sometimes you have to be um, use your punches in different ways for a bit of versatility. So what I'm actually eyeballing there is that line from that piece to that piece. If I trim it, let's do it. It's only a bit of paper. If I don't like it, I can start again. I've got plenty left. So what I was thinking was if I get my um, trimmer, which I've left over here. Now if I just trim across that line, if I line it up. and when you're lining things up with your trimmer don't forget that this guide helps you to put pressure on so it doesn't slip mm, I think that could work let's get rid of that piece so I'm lining up this very corner and this very corner with the cutting um I want to say, for some reason I want to say trough, you know what I mean, where the blade goes. So there we are. don't think I've put enough pressure on there. I was being a bit tentative. I think that's actually worked. What do we think? So sometimes... <laughs> do, you like, do you like that, Debbie? You don't have to give it CPR. Yes, tap, 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 not squidge, 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 is what I usually say in class. Now, I like the sentiment there, just covering over that join. Now, if you're uh, in the middle, everything has to be in the middle person, it will also just line up and cover that tiny little join. Or if you like to be across to one side, it will equally work there. I'm thinking that we need a bit of product on there, so I'm going to go with a bit of ribbon. And I know I've got magenta madness ribbon down here so I'm just going to have a little play with that is it too much pink let's have a see do I need a bow do I need it all the way across shall I do something fancy shall I just do a you know I could just do a loop underneath I think I might just go with a, a loose loop underneath like that Yes, let's do that. Okay, so. Oh, hi, Sheena. Lovely. Sheena's joined. Now, Sheena's saying it's the first time watching me. And Sheena's come to me via um, uh, another friend, Alison, who's a demonstrator. So you're very welcome, Sheena, to be here. It's lovely to see you joining me. So I'm going to do just a loose um, ribbon crossover. I'm going to stick it there. So as always, before I stick anything down, let's just try it and see whether it looks right to me. I might just pull that and go across because my, my flowers are going across that way. It might look a bit better if it's on a slight angle. And I think that, that just stops it from looking a bit lost, that sentiment. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to stick that down. So let me take another seat. 
and let's think about adhesive for ribbon so when we're sticking ribbon if we use wet glue it will just soak into the ribbon so we must use a dry glue for sticking a ribbon down so the choice of dry glue is you can use stamp and seal plus because that's a bit stronger than just stamp and seal stamp and seal will work but stamp and seal plus is the tape runner glue and it's a little bit stronger you could use a glue dot because that's a dry glue when i say dry glue i mean it's not a wet runny glue you could use a dimensional sticky foam pad and you could use some tear and tape double-sided sticky tape which i rarely use because i can't be faffed with picking it off so i'm going to go with a bit of stamp and seal plus and what I'm going to do is just put that stamp and seal plus across where I want the ribbon to go. I'm going to fold my ribbon into the shape that I want it. And I'm just going to press it down. I'm going to put another little piece down there. Do that crossover and just press it down. And the great thing about stamp and seal and stamp and seal plus is it is repositionable. You can just lift it. And I'm going to lift my sentiment using a couple of those dimensional foam pads. And I only ever use a couple, I don't go mad. You don't need them all over the back there. If you press it with your thumbnail, it helps those edges just pop up. And they're easier to pick off. And I'm just going to pop that over the top of that ribbon. I think I'm going to call that done. So I hope you've liked... Um, the f I hope you like the finished project and I hope that you've enjoyed watching me do that um, same but different. And the ribbon I used there was that lovely spotted tulle ribbon with those nice little dots on. Um, so again, let's just recap. I did these two yesterday evening. So silhouettes two different ways. And I used watercolour cardstock and I actually used exactly the same technique with the masking tape down each side. And I watercolour washed the colours across and you can see how they've bled into each other for that blend. A really beautiful effect and it works really well. And you can use watercolour cardstock, you can use uh, white thick cardstock and you can use the shimmer white cardstock for watercolouring. All three of those um, cardstocks will take on water really well. Whisper White Ordinary cardstock is too thin and it will tend to pill if you put too much water on. And this one I used the blending brushes, the new Stampin' Up blending brushes and I blended the ink again using the masking tape edge which I lifted off afterwards and I used the blending brushes to get that smooth blended finish. And that's exactly what I used on this card. I changed the pink from Melon Mambo to Magenta Madness. It's just a more vivid and bright pink. And it's so cheerful and lovely. I think um, today's a pretty nice day. It's really sunny and gorgeous outside. I'm looking forward to a walk a bit later. But I think yesterday was a bit grey and I needed a bit of a lift. So those bright colours of pink and yellow were super and just cheerful and lovely. But just remember... If you're using a blending technique, don't um, use your desktop. You'll need something underneath because you're going to be going off the page. Now, where am I? Oh, Sylvia and Brenda, you're still watching. Thank you very much. So, yeah, just a quick technique today. I'm just going to spin my camera around because I've got a couple of things, bits of news that I can just share with you. Just bear with me. Here I am. Here I am back again with my specs on. <laughs> and look, it wasn't me snoring, I promise. It was Ellie, look at her. She's asleep. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, so a couple of bits of news. Uh, we have a Stampin' Up! Give Us Demonstrators an update every Tuesday. And in the Tuesday update this morning, there's some news about how Brexit and COVID are affecting shipping to the UK. When we place orders for customers and for ourselves in the UK, our orders are actually picked and packed from our warehouse and distribution centre in Germany. 
and at the moment they're running behind by approximately they think 10 to 12 days in terms of just adjusting all of their paperwork because of um, the Brexit stipulations that they have to do. I don't even know the detail, but we all know what's been going on with Brexit and how long it took to get the um, agreement agreed and through. The good news is that Brexit has not affected any taxes or any additional payments that we have to make. Um, so things will come through customs without any uh, added payments to be made. So that's really good news for us. We were all watching for that news coming through. UPS, who do all of our shipping and delivery and distribution into the UK from Germany, are also backed up with their customs um, getting their deliveries through customs because of Brexit and because of what's happening um, at the ports in France, I think, and we do air freight our orders in to the UK as well from Germany. So depending on how they're coming in, so we are running a little bit late with orders. So I know I placed a really big order last week for a number of customers and included in that order was my anticipated class with the kangaroos that I anticipated running next week, Wednesday the 20th. Um, is it next week? I think it is next week, Wednesday the 20th of January. And unfortunately, it looks like that class will be postponed. The beauty of all of this lockdown scenario is that I don't have a venue booked to run that session. It's all virtual, it's all on live, so nothing lost. The class will be run as soon as the order is received and I have posted all of the kits out to my class um, virtual attendees. So it will all be going ahead, but I'm just giving you the heads up that things have been delayed because of Brexit and also COVID, um, uh, COVID working situations at the warehouse in Germany means that they are and have been for a while running on fewer staff or operating on fewer staff. So those fewer staff working different shifts means that warehouse picking and packing is delayed plus the new brexit paperwork and computer systems that they've had to implement um, is delaying things by about 10 to 12 days which i personally don't think is bad going ellie do you have something to say about that what do you think of brexit hmm? no no comment from ellie um so yeah personally i don't think 10 to 12 days fingers crossed is too much of a delay all things considered how long it took to get that decision through so watch this space i'll also be typing the same message as a post onto my facebook page so i'm not just burying that here in a live for just the people who are watching um, i will be putting a post of uh, information up there on my facebook page and contacting every customer who's placed an order okay well i think that's all from me today but thank you for joining me on this impromptu. I think this is what I'll be doing moving forward this year. It's just popping up when I have the time um, and I've got something worthwhile to share. Uh, I'm also anticipating just having coffee and chat sessions. So it may not even be demonstrating anything, just having a coffee and a chat about crafty things. I'd love to run a uh, Q&A session. So maybe crafty conundrums, if you've got any crafty conundrums, if you want help with any specific techniques um, or you've got any questions about um, how to use a tool or how to do a particular fold or just anything crafty if you've got a crafty conundrum pop me a message via messenger or an email there's a link on my page and maybe we can get a crafty q a session so it could be coffee and questions or something so that's something I've got in my mind to do as well. So fantastic. Thank you ever so much for joining me. Stay safe. Enjoy the sunshine if you've got it wherever you are in the UK. And if you don't, just snuggle up and get crafty. Take care. All the best from me.